Shh. I'm going to tell you a secret about how I 10x my renders to look a hell of a lot better than that they do when they come out of Blender. But first, all right, guys, this was totally unscheduled video. This video was motivated again by you guys. This is your channel as much as it is mine. And you guys are my motivation on what to make next. I got this comment I was reading last night here. It says, hey, man, I really love the way you presented your objects from the Winbow Challenge. Again, I hop about the Winbow Challenge. If you are serious, serious about 3D and you want to improve your 3D skills, follow the 30 day Winbow Challenge and learn and improve your skills. Back to the video. I really want to know how you think of composition materials, where they should go and what they should go on how you make those realistic materials and rendering. Can you please make a video about it? Something that most people don't realize is after your render is done, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. And I just wanted to share a little bit of light on something because most people don't talk about this. A few people do, Max Hayes does, and that's the post-processing after we are finished with the video. Now, I know most of you are gonna be like, oh, I don't wanna watch this. You're gonna click off the video because most of those videos suck. But these are the videos you should be watching because that's going to just take your render right now and 10x it. Make it a lot better than what it is right now. It's the quickest, easiest way to get your render to look a lot better than having to go in and deal with render setting and materials and things like that. I'm going to quickly show you of me working through taking my garbage render that I had yesterday, which I did not like. And once I ran it through Photoshop and did my post processing workflow on it, I was like, eh, it's not bad. I'm going to show you. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm inside of Photoshop and I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, I can't afford Photoshop. Photoshop is too expensive. It's $9.99 a month. It's $10 a month. I know people who say who go to Starbucks three times a week and say they can't afford Photoshop, but they just drop 15 bucks at Starbucks on three dollar coffee. Right. First thing I like to do is I like to add a bloom layer to my photos inside of Photoshop. It's like you can right there. You save render time by adding bloom later. You just duplicate your layer, put a blur layer on it, add it in screen mode, and you can see here I'm erasing it because I'm gonna paint in the, the effect where I want it versus just rendering out a whole bloom layer baked into your photo, you have no control. Now I can detail it right there. You can see me putting it in where I want it, painting it in. Right here, just this effect alone makes a huge amount of difference. After I get that done, I like to add in some more effects. I got these free dust, uh, lens dust elements off the line. I basically bring those in, do a quick mask on top of that. And again, I'm going to just paint this effect in. Now, imagine you're trying to render out this effect inside of Blender, like forget about it, especially on my 1050 seven year old laptop. It's just not gonna happen. This doing it in post, I got so much more freedom. Now I'm adding something that many people thought that was baked into the render, which was wasn't. It was done in post processing. Again, having more control, saving more render time. So what's that's done? What I like to do is jump into the raw camera filter. And this is basically equivalent to like Adobe Lightroom Mobile, which you can download for free on most Android and Mac phones. You can do the same thing. I'm going in here and what I'm doing is just basically pumping up the values, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of highlights, shadows here inside of uh, Photoshop. If you hold down alt, you can actually see individual sliders and what they're doing, which you can also do in Lightroom mobile version too. Um, and I'm just really trying to expand the dynamic range, make the little bit of highlights just peek out a little bit, make the little bit of the shadows just clip a little bit, extending the dynamic range and then messing with the highlights, contrast and exposure. And then what I also like to do is jump down to the texture and the clarity, literally just like separate the separate, have a little bit of separation between my clarity and my texture. Some images I might want a little bit dreamy look or some I wanted to be more crunchy, grungy digital look. I would crank that up here and then you got control of your vibrance. And then I like to use the detailing here, sharpness. But using the sharpness mask, I can put the sharpness where I want it instead of just sharpening the whole image. Lastly, I like to throw on a little bit of icing on top of the cake. I do use this uh, paid plugin called Dehancer. Back on my other channel where I do filmmaking with cell phones and stuff like that, I was sponsored by these guys in Dehancer. And this is basically emulates old film stock. I'm a kid from the 80s. I love old nostalgic film stock. It's fantastic. So this plugin allows me to use old movie stock, film stock, real world film stock, 
and add them to my image. So typically almost all of my images, I do use these types of stock. And it's just something that I like because it's nostalgic and it makes me feel good. And that's why I do it. If you guys are interested in this plugin, this video is not sponsored by them, but I do have a little discount code. I'll have the link down below, but that's something that I'd use daily on almost every single one of my renders. I literally spend maybe five to 10 minutes max inside of Photoshop, sometimes on Lightroom Mobile when I'm out, when I'm, I'm out and about just to beef up my renders just that last bit and it literally takes your render to that next level if you guys are interested in more, more stuff about octane blender take a look at this video here where i go through a lot of my workflow on how i get some of these looks and how i make some of these materials keep filming do the work because nobody wants to do the work but everybody wants to success it's the only way you're going to get better peace